It's 11 trivia questions on 90s movie quotes. I'll give you the quote from a 90s movie and you tell me what flick we're talking about. This is Trivia with Buds. What it be, and welcome to another episode of the Trivia with Buds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Buds, wearing my Captain America Shield shirt here on YouTube. And if uh, you want to see this shirt, head on over to YouTube and check it out. If you're just listening with your ears, I applaud you as well for subscribing to the show, for listening every day, for sharing episodes with friends. Thank you so much for doing all that to help the show grow. We are up to 180 reviews on iTunes, so if you have a second and you've been listening for a while, go leave me a review. I don't think you even have to write a review. I think you can leave just a star rating, but if you want to say a few words, that would be awesome too. And shout out to my friend Alexander, a trivia host in Maine, who just left me a nice review. You can go read that over on the podcast app on your iPhone or on iTunes on your computer. Do people still use iTunes on their computer? Probably not nearly as much anymore (laughs) as they used to, but uh, it's just easier. Everything's on your phone, you know? Uh, Today's episode is about 90s movie quotes. 90s movie quotes used this last week. It was a big hit, so I thought it'd be fun for the show. And I'm holding this book up on YouTube. It is called The Tao of Bill Murray. And it says, Real Life Stories of Joy, Enlightenment, and Party Crashing by Gavin Edwards. I got this at the Dollar Tree, which is insane. Every once in a while, the Dollar Tree gets a big shipment of books that couldn't sell or just had overstock of uh, different things from uh, Walmarts and Barnes and Nobles and things. So I grabbed this one for a buck, and uh, I'll probably read it and then give it away as a trivia prize. But here's the author's note from the beginning. Bill Murray has shown up everywhere from the sideline of the 1986 NFC Championship game, wearing an old-fashioned leather football helmet to the Mediterranean island of Urnosos, Urinosis, uh, volunteering as a digger on a 2006 NYU archaeological expedition. Because everything seems possible when it comes to Bill, the man has attracted more than the usual number of fabulists. For years now, inventing Bill myths has been one of the internet's favorite games. In case you were wondering, Bill isn't running for president, and he actually doesn't have the contractual right to steal the master tapes of the Wu-Tang Clan album Once Upon a Time in Shaolin from Martin Screlly. But one of the beautiful things about Bill Murray is that there are more than enough staggering true anecdotes to fill a book, this book, for example. So if that sounds interesting to you, check this one out. It's the Tao of Bill Murray. Uh, Moby on the back says, as much as I love Gavin Edwards' wonderful The Tao of Bill Murray, I can't help but feel sad that Bill Murray has never covered my eyes on a street corner. So that's a fun one that I'm going to check out. Uh, today's episode is also preluded by a random fact someone told me. My friend Dom from High Point Brewing in San Dimas, California, just told me this. He said that Oprah appears as a receptionist in the video for Africa by Toto. So I went back and looked it up. You can only see her for like a split second, and I couldn't find any articles talking about it. But if anybody finds a good one, send me some info and I'll read some more of it on the podcast. Uh, I had never heard that before, that Oprah Winfrey, before she was famous, before she had a talk show or anything, was an extra in Toto's Africa video. So go check that out. I think she's like a library receptionist because it's like a library setting. But uh, if anybody knows about that, let me know. Okay, today is 90s Movie Quote Day, and we're jumping into those questions right about now. Here we go. All right, here we go. This is question number one for 90s Movie Quotes. It's a movie from 1993, and here's the quote. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Number one, number one. Question number two, 1998, good morning. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Number two, what movie is that from? From 1998, good morning. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Number three, 1998, that rug really tied the room together. Number three, another one from 1998, that rug really tied the room together. Question number four, 1997. I'm a busy girl. I've got exactly four days to break up a wedding, steal the bride's fella, and I haven't one idea 
Uh, one clue how to do it. Number four, 1997. I'm a busy girl. I've got exactly four days to break up a wedding, steal the bride's fella, and I haven't one clue how to do it. Number five from 1995. Now back up, put the gun down, and get me a pack of Tropical Fruit Bubblicious and some Skittles. What movie is that from? 1995. Get me some Skittles, some Tropical Fruit Bubblicious. Back up, put down the gun. Number five. Question number six, 1997. So shall we shag now or shall we shag later? Number six, 1997. Shall we shag now or later? Number seven, 1995. Why don't you tell your daddy to comb his damn hair? Look like some spiders is having a meeting on his head. Number seven, 1995. Why don't you tell your daddy to comb his damn hair? Look like some spiders is having a meeting on his head. Number seven. Question number eight, 1993. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. That's a creepy one. Number eight, 1993. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. Number eight. Question number nine, 1995. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Number nine, 1995. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. What movie? Number nine. Question number 10, 1993. This is one time where television really fails to capture the true excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. Number 10, 1993. This is one time where television really fails to capture the true excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. And for two points, which of these movies had the highest U.S. box office at the time of their release? Was it Men in Black, Dumb and Dumber, The Nutty Professor, or Tommy Boy? Which one of those movies made the most money out of those four? Men in Black, Dumb and Dumber, The Nutty Professor, or Tommy Boy? Those are all your questions for today's 90s movie quote quiz. We'll be right back in just a second to see how you did with the answers. <laughs> We're back with the answers to 90s movie quotes. Let's see how you did on this quick quiz. Number one, 1993, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. That was Jurassic Park. Number one, Jurassic Park. B.D. Wong plays one of those scientists in that movie. And he uh, was in a special that I worked on for NBC. It was like 100 years of NBC or something. And I had to call all these people to get them to sign release forms. And I found B.D. Wong's number on uh, a website and called it. And he was on the set of something. And he gave me the info I needed. It, and he was like, how did you get this number? And I was like, got to go. Bye. So that was my B.D. Wong interaction. Number two, 1998. Good morning. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That was The Truman Show. Number two, The Truman Show. Number three, 1998. That rug really tied the room together. The Big Lebowski. Great Jeff Bridges movie. That whole movie is just a fun one to watch. The Big Lebowski. Number four, 1997. I'm a busy girl. I've got exactly four days to break up a wedding, steal the bride's fella, and I haven't one clue how to do it. My best friend's wedding. My best friend's wedding, Julia Roberts. Number five, 1995. Now back up, put down the gun, and get me a pack of Tropical Fruit Bubblicious and some Skittles. That is bad boys. I think it's Will Smith who says it. It's definitely Will Smith or Martin Lawrence, but I think it's Will Smith. And I read a fun fact that that, um, that movie, which just had the third one come out, they said that that movie was for Martin Lawrence, like it was a Martin Lawrence vehicle. And they said, who should we have as your sidekick? And he's like, oh, this guy in The Fresh Prince is pretty good. Let's have him, <laughs> let's have him do it. And uh, some might say that uh, Will Smith, you know, got a little bit bigger than Martin Lawrence um, as years went on. But interesting how that started as a Martin Lawrence movie. Number six, 1997. So shall we shag now or shall we shag later? That was Austin Powers, the first Austin Powers, Interma International Man of Mystery. Number seven, 1995. Why don't you tell your daddy to comb his damn hair? Look like some spiders having a meeting on his head. That was the comedy film Friday. Friday, number seven. Number eight, 1993. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older. They stay the same age. Matthew McConaughey in Dazed and Confused. A fantastic movie. If you've never seen it, go back and watch it. Number nine, 1995. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. That was The Usual Suspects. Number nine. 
The Usual Suspects. That came out a while ago, 25 years ago. Holy cow. Uh, Number 10, 1993. This is one time where television really fails to capture the true excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. That's Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. Remember, we talked about that book in the intro, The Tao of Bill Murray. And number 11, for two points, which of these movies had the highest box office in the U.S. at the time of their release? Men in Black, Dumb and Dumber, Nutty Professor, Tommy Boy. Always go with some action because it translates to the uh, international office uh, uh, audiences and usually gives an overall bigger box office number. Although this question was just talking about the U.S. So in the U.S., we like action, too. Men in Black was the answer there. Men in Black, out of the four, made the most money. $589 million, I think it was. And those are all your answers for the questions today on the 90s Movie Quote Quiz. I hope you had fun playing along, watching on YouTube, listening on any podcast app. And remember, there's 800 episodes to check out. So if you like this one, go back and check out tons and tons of episodes. On your regular podcasting app, it should go back at least 50 or 100 episodes. But if you want more, if you want to dive into the deep archives and catalog, Uh, You can go to CastBox, download that app, and you can see all the episodes. I think Spotify now has all the episodes listed as well, 700 and something of them, if you want to listen. It's time for the question of the day, brought to you by Funky Monkey Designs. Check them out at fmdesignsinc.com for all your printing needs. Their question is, in the medical world, what does BMI stand for? What does BMI stand for in the medical world? Tweet me your answer at RyanBuds or email RyanBuds at gmail.com to be eligible for a prize. Yesterday's question of the day answer was amber for fossilized resin, and that works good for the uh, Jurassic Park reference earlier. And your trivia team name of today is Warner Bros. Before Hoes. Warner Bros before hose. That is it for today's episode. I hope you had a ton of fun listening, watching, and telling a friend. Leave those iTunes reviews. Help us get up to 200 iTunes reviews and support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash trivia with buds. I'll send you a bunch of cool stuff like some of the stuff you see behind me. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for telling a friend and we'll see you tomorrow for more trivia with me. Cheers. (music) 